Well, 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 here we are again. On July 18th, a few screenshots showed various popular Roblox games with many test badges uploaded to their badge page, obviously turning into the speculation of a new Roblox event. These games included but weren't limited to Adopt Me, Slap Battles, and Epic Minigames. After many more leaks, Roblox officially announced the event in a teaser video featuring these five flags presumably depicting teams, with one of the flags having Feet. This event, later revealed to be called The Games, seemed promising on the outside. However, looking at Roblox's recent return to events, there's no doubt that players of previous events were a bit skeptical. Would this Roblox event be as good as Third Time's The Charm, or will the event bomb, succumbing to the same fate that the two previous events did? The problem with both the Classic and the Hunt is that the games involved in these events made their challenges pretty lackluster, causing people to get bored easily. With all that in mind, would this event break the dry spell Roblox? Roblox created, Roblox followed up this teaser with another, giving an official date for the games' kickoff. Even more surprising, those teams covered in the first trailer involved YouTubers. Five YouTuber teams were involved in the games, with users allowed to join them and help their team collect points and currencies to win the games. The team that won would have the YouTubers and their supporters win an exclusive avatar item. As is usual with any new event, a game page was created, and a day before the event was slated to kick off, we had our first avatar accessory released relating to the event. In contrast to former event bundles, the Legendary Sky Champion bundle was far cheaper than its predecessors, a mere 5,000 Robux. To the people who still think this is too expensive, just compare the price of this event bundle to others and find out that it's fairly cheap. I know I like to dogpile on Roblox because it gets views, but you have to give them credit for lowering prices to appease the player base, as nowadays it's not very common. Anyway, even the games in the games didn't seem to stir the pot, as 50 games would soon be revealed to be in the event, none of which seemed to bat an eye from the players. This number of games was an in-between compared to the Hunt and Classics games, with these two events having a 115 games respectively. Speaking of, we all know that the Classic and partially the Hunt failed mainly because the games in the event would put minimal effort into their quests, a common trait that irked many event players. I guess people assumed that Roblox would be more strict on these games so that they could provide better quests and make their experiences worthwhile. Perhaps the only drawback is that this event didn't seem as popular as the Classic and the Hunt, despite being initially favored more critically. Only time would tell how this event would do in retrospect, however. Roblox had finally managed to do the one thing that we didn't see in the Classic and partially the Hunt. Kill the hype before the event even started. Would the event deliver? Let's find that out right now. When the event kicked off, the Roblox community did their standard procedure. The live streamers would go off and live stream this event, Connor 3D would lose sleep making tutorials for every game, and most importantly, the community would determine this event's legacy. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, we will be talking about what the community thought of this event. On the first day, complaints flooded in, ranging from a team being named after feet, the prizes being mostly Arthur layered clothing, and the games being repetitive. As we saw in the last two events, Roblox followed practically the same formula when it came to rewarding players. In the participating games, you could collect currency, for this event it was silver and shards, by completing the games' as quests, which you could then use to unlock exclusive avatar items. It's nothing that special, and you could consider this formula repetitive, however, I haven't seen many criticisms relating to this recurring system. However, as we said earlier, the real burden would lay in the rewards, which were mainly Arthro and Futuristic, and as we all know, Roblox users hate Arthro. There were plenty of rewards in this event, but they just suck, so they were out of the question as the main incentive for completing this event. It also seemed like a big betrayal because the event before this one was meant to celebrate classic Roblox, and here came Roblox in the games heavily promoting their futuristic ideology. This betrayal, along with other downsides, would create far more criticism than both the Hunt and the Classic had, and it showed. A lot of users said this event was the worst, referencing what I did, the items, team feet, and the progression, or lack thereof, from previous events. Even those who strongly liked previous events would come out and share their dissatisfaction with this one. On Twitter, Creecraft put out a tweet asking for people's opinions on the event, with the consensus being that the game's tasks felt like chores, and completing them would give you mediocre rewards. Creecraft, who was very positive about the two previous events seemed to vent his frustrations in the replies by relating to other people who completed the event. After the event, he'd put out a video on Twitter venting his frustrations. Compared to his consensus of previous events, 
He was brutal, stating how he didn't finish the event due to how annoying he found the quests and how disappointed he was with the rewards. Many people related to Creek's take, yet another instance of the Roblox community coming together to clown on the games. The backlash was noticeable enough that it showed in the games' hub's reception. When the hunt dropped, its hub received 88% likes compared to 12% dislikes. The Classics hub would have 84%, slightly less, and the games' would end up at 73%, with the likes falling a breathtaking 15% in just a few hours after the event kicked off. As I usually do, I conducted a poll asking people if they thought the games was great, good, okay, or bad, and only around 5% of people liked the event. Around 25% thought that the event was okay, and over 65% hated this event. Green LEGO Cats would do the same thing, but this time, most of the people thought it was simply mid, with only 2% calling it good. Once again, to most, it seemed like the games featured no progression from previous events, and this time, more of the criticism was directed towards this event, once again being a dev hunt. The rewards sucked, the game sucked, and pretty much all the things that people disliked in both the classic and the hunt were in this event. This is disappointing seeing as everyone expected Roblox to improve. While you could make the argument that having teams involved in this event featured plenty of innovation, honestly, from what I've seen, Roblox players just aren't feeling it. In fact, the teams are probably the biggest complaint people have with this event, and it all comes down to the team currently winning, the Crimson Cats. You see, every team has three YouTubers on it, and the Crimson Cats consist of Creecraft, Lana's Life, and Mr. Nightfox. If you're well versed in the Roblox YouTube sphere, it doesn't take long to find out why, compared to other teams, the Crimson Cats were in insanely stacked. Creecraft is Roblox's biggest live streamer and one of Roblox's biggest American YouTubers, second to only Flamingo, being the biggest creator by far out of the 15. If you remove all the soulless, cringe Roblox TikTokers, Lana's Life is pretty much the biggest Roblox TikToker, once again being the biggest TikToker in this event. And then we have Nightfox, who, while being a small YouTuber compared to his teammates, is still pretty helpful as a relevant simulator YouTuber. In the heyday of Roblox simulator YouTubers where Tofu and Dennis rule, Nightfox was just starting to become big. But compared to bigger YouTubers like Tear Bright Games and Russo Plays in terms of relevancy, Nightfox is one of the biggest simulator YouTubers next to LCLC today. While you may think that Creecraft, as a Roblox variety YouTuber, covers all Roblox games, perhaps the only niche he doesn't extensively cover is simulators. This makes Nightfox a nice fit in the Crimson Cats, a team that covers the audience of pretty much all of Roblox. As such, when the game started, the Crimson Cats quickly took a massive lead due to excess players and influence, Roblox noticed how dominant the Crimson Cats team was, so they decided to help out the other teams by giving them point boosts as favors. This certainly helped, as the Crimson Cats and the Mighty Ninjas, a Spanish team, are neck and neck. However, the two other English teams in this event fell behind badly. This led to some disgruntled members of other teams complaining, a worthy contributor to the game's is less than par like to dislike ratio. This also led to unwanted toxicity in the Roblox community, something that probably isn't noteworthy now, but could have a hugely negative impact on the game's legacy. Anyway, it appears that after being thrown two mediocre events, a good deal of the Roblox player base decided why bother even playing the games. When Roblox announced this event after after minimal hype surrounding the leaks, their tweet only garnered a couple hundred thousand views, a far cry from the millions they pulled announcing The Hunt and Classic. When the event did drop, it appeared that even Roblox users who gave them the benefit of the doubt disliked this event from the start, leading to a huge critical and commercial downfall. An example of this is when comparing the visits of the three new events, the games has a huge drop off compared to the Classic and The Hunt. By the time The Hunt wrapped up, its hub had cleared over a quarter billion visits, with the Classic's boasting a lower, but still a respectable 100 million. However, by the looks of it, it appears that the game's popularity is pretty inferior compared to the two events, struggling to break the 50 million visit mark after the halfway point. Hold on, this event isn't over yet, meaning it's not completely over commercially, except probably critically, and from the looks of it, Roblox appeared to be bringing back the 1x1x1 boss fight. While this is essentially a copy and paste from the classic, the 1x1x1 boss fight at the end of that was pretty disappointing, as no prize was given for winning the fight. What was revealed, though, was an overpriced limited edition sword affiliated with the boss, which, as you could expect, didn't blow over well with anyone. That's it? Due to how much of a failure it was, Roblox definitely took in the feedback, and on August 7th, they announced the fight, telling people to get ready, as in 24 hours, the fight would begin. 
The fight happened the next day, and, compared to the classic, was great, allowing the hub to peak at 50,000 users before it commenced. You would fight one by one by one by one on a spleef-like platform among other Roblox players, with the whole thing being a lot more cinematic than the pretty low-effort classic boss fight. I will point out that they were selling out by going back to the classic theme, but the fight was good enough that I'll let it slide, and they created a nice little redemption for the rewards fiasco. This is because beating him would give you a glitch hacker laurel, a pretty cool item for being easy to obtain. To many, it seemed like this boss fight was the highlight of the event, but was it good enough to save the event? No. Honestly, if Roblox ever wants to recover from this event, they'll have to play it real safe. The Hunt and the Classic were both supposed to be a return to form for Roblox, however, they tried to cling on tight to what the community liked. Egg Hunts and Classic Roblox, respectively. The games was Roblox's first attempt at testing the water since the two, and the results show they'll have to go back to making safe events. Yet, the Death Hunt formula is getting old by now, so Roblox is going to have a really hard time at having something to fall back on. For their next event to be good, I think they need to somewhat abandon this dev hunt format that they've been clinging so tightly to. On top of that, they need to make the rewards worthwhile and strictly monitor games that try to short players with their quests. It's not going to be easy, and Roblox's corporate vision will probably do its best to bottleneck an honest comeback. The games, while a big failure, was a big lesson and gave Roblox a reality check, so the next event will hopefully be better. This video was a pain to research due to how many people just don't care about the games, leading to little coverage. And so, if you appreciate my efforts and feel I earned it, subscribe and let me know why you disliked or liked the games in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video.